physical therapy setting, we see a lot of patients for their complaints of low back pain. In 6% of the population with low back pain, their pain is actually coming from structures other than their back, which includes a piriformis muscle. That's what I'll be discussing today is piriformis syndrome. To understand the piriformis syndrome a little bit more, we're going to explain to you what the piriformis muscle is, where it is, and what it does for you. The piriformis muscle attaches, starts up here at sacrums 2 through 4 on the anterior aspect. So where this green band is, it's going to act like the muscle itself. It comes over and then attaches over here on your hip bone, right on the greater trochanter. So as you can see, this is where your piriformis muscle lies on you anatomically. Piriformis syndrome is a peripheral neuritis of the sciatic nerve caused by an abnormal condition of the piriformis muscle. In 22% of the population, the sciatic nerve passes through the muscle belly or the nerve may split with one branch running inferiorly, meaning just below, or superiorly above the muscle. Common signs and symptoms seen in patients with piriformis syndrome may include a history of local trauma, pain in the buttocks gluteal region that is deep and difficulty with walking, active pain brought on by stooping or lifting, a palpable spindle or sausage-like mass tender to palpation at the piriformis region, glute atrophy in chronic cases, meaning muscle wasting, intolerance to sitting, pain with bowel movements, and radicular symptoms in the lower extremity, such as numbness and tingling. For a patient with piriformis syndrome, their symptoms may increase as the day goes on because they're doing those aggravating activities throughout the day. For patients that are doing those aggravating activities such as sitting for a long period of time, their pain might be worse at the end of the day, whereas those who feel stiffness in the morning might actually just be an irritation of the muscle and it's not impinging on that nerve. Either way, it's important for a physical therapist to assess the muscle and the conditions that it's presenting with. What do you do for work? Um, I work at a desk. Okay, yeah. so are you sitting a lot? Yes, I am. Okay, so does the pain get worse the longer you sit? Yeah, uh, yes it does. Yeah, okay. What about like putting on your shoes in the morning? Does that hurt? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Activities that may aggravate the pain include sitting, putting on your shoes, so crossing your leg while sitting, squatting, lunging, ascending steps, meaning going upstairs, motions of hip adduction and internal rotation. Easing activities that may alleviate the pain include stretching the muscle, which includes laying on your back with your hip abducted and externally rotated, standing from a seated position, and traction of the hip joint. A typical 24-hour pain pattern for a patient with piriformis syndrome includes morning stiffness due to inflammation of the muscle if it is strained or injured. Soreness may also increase throughout the day, but depends on how many or how long the aggravating factors are performed throughout the day. You may be at increased risk of piriformis syndrome if you have history of low back pain, radiculopathy, or disc herniation, or maybe you've had prior hip surgeries or injuries at your hip. A physical therapist can help determine if piriformis syndrome might be the reason for your low back and radiating symptoms down your leg. By doing a thorough evaluation, a physical therapist can use their clinical reasoning and differential diagnosis skills to rule out any other pathologies that might also be causing back pain or radiating symptoms. 85% of patients with piriformis syndrome have success with conservative treatments such as physical therapy. The rest of the 15% may require further treatment, such as surgery. However, this should always be a last resort to patients' pain. The research shows that patients that needed surgery showed excellent prognosis in 11 out of 15 patients and good prognosis in 4 out of the 15 patients. I hope you found this information helpful. If this sounds like something that you or someone you know might be struggling with, Please talk to your doctor to see if physical therapy might be right for you and if we can help manage your pain.